Okay, everybody, as she said, my name is, uh, I actually go by David, but my first name is Charles, and my project involves using robotics to um, prepare students for the jobs of tomorrow. So basically, um, there's a handout coming around right now. It is my answers to all of the questions that were required for the um, the grant proposal and whatnot. It's not anything that you guys will be particularly interested in. I just found that if you pass somebody something out to look at, they usually look at it and then they don't look at you. So that makes it a lot easier on me. And um, also I very rarely have access to a microphone. So instead of doing the presentation, I'm just gonna sing Stairway to Heaven, guitar parts and everything, all seven minutes. And if you guys wanna back me up on drums, will be good. I'll sit down and the next person can come up. Now, um, but my project is basically about building problem solvers and original thinkers. I've been a math teacher, for, this makes my 10th year teaching math, and every year I get students, I get students from like the entire spectrum, students that struggle with things, students that are brilliant and gifted, and I've found in, over the years that even gifted students are not naturally great problem solvers. They're really systematic in their thinking, like they want to know how to do something and they want to follow that procedure and go with it. So I believe that robotics and coding and um, working with computer systems is a great way to naturally build problem solving abilities without the students even realizing that that's what they're working on. So um, as I said, I know this has been a problem my entire career having students coming in not being natural problem solvers and only wanting to look at one way to solve something. So what I have done is I've written the grant to get some money for building kits for additional kits to use in my robotics um, program and um, we use VEX and Lego EV3 robots and when the year starts off we um, I give them scenarios and they'll build a, pre, a predestined model and everybody starts off with the same thing. They learn to put it together. We look at gear ratios. We look at the strength of angles when building a structure. And then I teach them to start basically coding and programming the motors. From that point on, we start adding different types of sensors to the robots and they learn how robots respond in different situations to touch or to advances in the color spectrum, um, to sounds and whatnot. And then I start sending the students on missions. I'll give them very simple tasks where they just have to have the robot follow a line only using their motors. Then I'll teach them, well, you can make them follow a line of a specific color using a color sensor. And we just slowly build up through the first semester. And eventually, by de the time December rolls around, all of these students are able to program the robots to do various different things. So in semester two, which is where the project really actually begins, students have to decide upon a problem that exists in the real world. And that problem can be anything. It, be, can, it can be something small that there may already be solutions for. It could be something big that we don't have solutions for. And then they design an original robot that they feel will either help to alleviate some of that problem or completely resolve it. And all of them will not be successful. They won't be able to find, like they can't stop global warming or whatever problem they identify. Some of them are just too big. But what we do is we take their ideas and we let them test them using the engineering design process. So they'll come up with an idea, they'll design a robot using engineering concepts and, and things of that nature using mathematics. They'll design something to execute this idea. Then after they've ran it, if it's unsuccessful, they'll pull it back and they'll reevaluate their, their model. And they'll make corrections and adjustments as needed, and then they'll test again. And they'll repeat this process until they've got something that they're satisfied or they run out of time one way or another. But what happens is when the students are building this and they put their heart into designing an original machine or robot, they run it out there and they're like disheartened when it doesn't do what it's supposed to do because they feel like they've narrowed everything down, they've thought everything through and it should do what they want them to. And if it doesn't, they know right away what was not working and then they go back and they're brainstorming and they're thinking of how to correct that error in the robot that they came up with. And it's just really neat to watch them evolve as problem solvers because they are, they're given open-ended situations. I'm not giving them a specific um, set of criteria that they have to do. They're thinking of all of these things on their own and everybody's designs will be different and everybody will be encountering different problems that occurs specifically to their, their situation. Um, let's see. Oh, um, their success is measured based on are they using the engineering design process? 
have they developed at least an original design that will function in the way that it's intended to and um, are they focused on their established problem that they decided on at the beginning of the semester um, that is uh, I can tell you like a couple things that they've been working on like so far um, we haven't busted the VEX out yet but students have been using the Lego kits and everybody started with the same one and their first project was to make their kits go faster they all had the same kits and they had the same motors that run at the same speed but they had to find a way to make their robots travel faster than the natural kit system is set to work so that brought us to discussions about gear ratios and building little gear boxes that kind of function like like a tra mini transmissions or whatever that can speed their robot up and everybody's robot looked different everybody had like some of them were big and bulky some of them were really small and concise but everybody had a unique project just by me saying make your robot go faster so it's really neat to watch the kids like think outside of the box um, encounter problems on their own that just occur naturally and then fix those problems and it's just really neat to see and um, I'm thankful to KVEC for giving me the grant to help make this project come to life. That's all I have for you all. Unless you want me to sing Stairway to Heaven. Stairway to Heaven. Oh, under your chairs, if there is a blue plate that has my signature on it, your all's dinner's free today. Like look under your desk, is there, does anybody have the blue plate? I'm just kidding, your all's dinner's on me anyways. I'm buying everybody's. Y'all wait for free downstairs. You don't have to pay a dime for it. Thank you all.